Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. You know, sometimes as a YouTuber, you have to deal with comments that are just downright ridiculous, obscene, or just dumb. A lot of them are really good, and today we're going to share some of the uh, real winners with you. Alright everyone, if you're new to the channel, I'm L to the W. I'm a veteran, I'm a coffee drinker, and an avid car enthusiast. We do a lot of camping, we do travel, we do a little bit of everything in this channel. So hopefully this interests you and you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So uh, yeah, I'm getting to a point where the channel's kind of gotten large enough to where I'm getting a regular amount of comments. And some of them are real uh, doozies. I mean, not all of them are mean, bad, and that. But some of them just get a little taken back by... Um, so I'm going to do this video driving. I kind of have some notes here as to some of the things. And I'm just going to drive on some very sparsely populated back roads. But this first one here is going to be kind of long. So before we hit the road, I'm going to go over this. So as you guys know, we're in Project Z28. And I've had a uh, problem with the idle. It's basically, we're boiling it down to, um, this is just really large cam. Uh, the cam specs call for like a 2500 or so stall converter. I don't have that. I have a stock torque converter, which is almost at full lock on idle. And it's just it's dragging the cam down and it's making things hard to tune. So we kind of narrowed it down to that. I just, I really don't have the time or money to mess with the torque converter. Also, you know, it's kind of the thinking of uh, if you take a transmission like this one that's got 91,000 miles on it and you put a bunch of fresh transmission fluid in it the transmission fluid is going to start cleaning old debris and that and then you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff stirred up and have problems like my wife's old Buick Rendezvous that we had before we bought this Buick had a transmission solenoid go out at about 90,000 miles or 80 I think 88,000 miles on it um, about six months later, yeah, it started jumping out of gear. So they had to take the transmission pan off, replace the solenoid. There's a bunch of new fluid in there, and it did die shortly thereafter. We traded in. When that thing started jumping out of gear, we we're like, no more money. Let's get rid of this thing. So, um, so I had a comment here. If you're still having IAC issues, turn the key on, unplug the IAC, turn the key off, plug it back in, turn the key on, and that'll reset it. You guys that have watched the videos know how many times we've gone through the reset process. I've even had my tuner tell me about putting the uh, jumper cable in the ALDL, which is what I told him. I said, this has been done. It's not that easy. It's a huge cam. If you've watched the previous videos, you would know this. You forgot about the part about the jumper and ALDL commanding it to reset. <laughs> it's granted. The other way can work, but if you do the jumper, it's it's 100%. It's, it's going to reset. But uh, And he goes, so... Uh, he comes back and says, it is that easy. Besides, what do you have to lose? Dude, I already said we reset the IAC numerous times. Read the comment. Uh, then he, uh, I follow you based on the, on the intake from, from the start. So get a FSM and save yourself money and headaches. The only thing I can figure FSM is a factory service manual, which I do have. Thank you very much. I do have a digital copy on my laptop. So uh, it's not going to help. We've changed the parameters of the car. I'm no longer dealing with a stock intake cam and all that stuff. The problem is the cam is very lopy and there's big surges in vacuum because of the, the cam. So it's having a hard time keeping up with the movements and stuff. So, Oh. Is your base idle set correctly? Fucking serious? Are you goddamn serious? Like, some of this shit's just insulting to, to even question. Like, I don't know how to take a screwdriver instead of freaking idle. <sighs> Huge cam gets tuned via tuner. The IAC is fine at a base idle. Dude, then, like I said before, like I've told people, don't diagnose my car over the internet. You're not here working on it. And this is just freaking idiotic now at this point. Like, you're going to tell me that, that it's just fine. Like, oh. Yeah, so if your IC is maxed out, then your base idle is too low for the cam. Well, if my base idle is too low, the car wouldn't run! Would it? 
Oh, I'm sorry. This this kind of stuff, it just... <laughs> guys, remember when I did the video, we had the IAC disconnected. I even had the hole taped over, and we set a base idle. We set a base idle. I said, if you watched the videos, you would have known all this stuff. Therefore, raising the base idle, your IAC will function properly. But what do I know? I'm just some dumbass on YouTube, right? You said it, not me. Uh... You didn't read my second response, but that's uh, to raise your base idle. Then your ISC will be able to adjust. I know you want that lope, but EFA cars and lope don't mix. Okay, really? Really? You want to tell that to everybody that's got a fuel injected car with a big cam? They work with all the right components. Like I said, my, this cam, the spec card, calls for a big stall converter. I don't have that, so we're fighting that issue. This is kind of like everybody telling me the reason my car wouldn't run before was because of short circuits and bad fuel pumps and all these other crazy things. So, and says, maybe one day you'll be humbled by someone on the interweb, but I doubt it. Ask your tuner to read my comments. I'm like, dude, I'm not wasting my tuner's time with that stupidity. So with that, let's start the car. Ugh and go for a ride. Obviously fuel injection, the big cam's working. My only problem right now is with the air conditioning. The IAC doesn't have enough steps to compensate with the AC. That's just putting too much of a load on the engine. Like I said, torque converters can be the answer, but if I do it, I want to just throw a transmission in here with the shift kit. If I'm going to go through that hassle of removing the transmission, we may as well just do the whole thing. And right now, money's tight. Let's go for a drive. All right, next comment. No such thing as Russian coffee. <laughs> this comes from a video I shot when I was in Russia. We were in the Russian mall. And uh, when I do the videos, you know, I'm just pretty much free, free-handed. You know, I don't have a teleprompter. I don't write a script. I just, uh, you know, I, I grab the GoPro and or whatever camera I have and I just talk to it like I'm doing now. I'm just talking. So when we're in Russia, I'm like, okay, so here's a bunch of Russian coffee. Just meaning like this is coffee that's in Russia. Didn't mean it was made in Russia, but I got all the white knights. I've had this comment several times about it's not Russian. It's made here. Well, you know what? Maxwell House uses Colombian beans, but we still call it American coffee. So, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so here we go with the LS thing. Somebody says they're going to buy an IROC and put an LS3 in it and they'll have the ultimate IROC. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not against LS swaps. The LS is a great engine, but just, you know, you put an LS in it, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be ultimate. Maybe to you that that's fine. That's your dream. That's your hope. Uh, you know, we, we've gone through this before about LS swapping. Uh, Viewer that I've talked to, Gerard, he's got an IROC uh, with the first TPI intake. He's running 12 seconds. 12, 2 maybe, I think you were, I don't recall. Uh, he's very well, pretty solid on, on the 12s. And he said he had a lot of tire spin, even with our triple eights. I think he said he had. So, uh, yeah, I, even if you put an LS3 in this car, you might be hard pressed to catch this guy. With the uh, with this first intake, okay. So this one's good. Do you know where I can find a Russian bride? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh man. So this was from another video I filmed when I was in Russia. I guess he knew what my wife is originally from Russia. And, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I kind of have to laugh at it or be insulted. I don't know. My wife is not a mail order bride. I did not go to Russia, find a Russian woman, and bring her back. She came here on her own. She wanted to set up a better life for her and her daughter. She came here. She worked really hard. She studied the language, learned everything. And she got a citizenship long before I ever met her. So it wasn't, uh, you know, I don't know. We just happened to meet. It wasn't I went out trying to find a Russian. It just happened to be that way. So, no, I don't know where you can meet one, maybe eat army or something. I don't know. All right. Uh, thanks. Can I? Oh, let me see this. I can't read my homework. Okay, from oh, that's far from a typical Russian house, and they don't dry clothes that way. 
comes from a video, another video I did in Russia, of my mother-in-law's apartment there in Russia. Now, apartments are a little bit different. Some are rented out, but most of them are owned. You actually own the, it's, it's kind of like a condo. You own, you own it, but they still use the term apartment. And uh, some of them are rented out by owners, like her sister has one that they rent. Uh, my wife's mom has one, which I videotaped and did a thing. If you go to Russia, even a lot of Europe, there's these very, these like rectangular buildings. They're kind of tall. They're like six, eight, ten stories tall, made of brick, and they're everywhere. I mean, literally everywhere. And you're gonna tell me that's not typical? I mean, I don't know. I was in Russia when I filmed it. It's <laughs> very typical. And then they don't dry. No, a lot of people in Russia don't have clothes dryers. They don't have dryers like we have here. So they use some type of line drying. Like her mom had a wooden rack that had strings on it, and I showed our clothes drying on it. So I don't know. I mean, her mom's Russian. That's how she does her laundry. So, uh, all right. Why did I say? Well, so this is about my video I did at the Jenny Springs campground. So why did I stay if I was so miserable? Oh, it's called uh they don't give refunds because they know the place is a total shithole so the place wouldn't refund we spent about 110 dollars for two nights and uh no they wouldn't refund the money we asked after the first night told them like this is ridiculous we can't sleep there's too much noise and all that they don't do refunds so we stayed i mean during the day even though it was loud it wasn't horrible you know we went canoeing one day we went rafting one day we still had a good time with each other walking around and stuff like that so you know it's just when it came time to at night to sleep the noise was freaking unbearable all right um wrong for censoring and this is from the same video just read wrong for censoring negativity well this is my channel i censor out what i want to if people are going to be dumb i'm going to delete and block them because you know what people feed off of that as soon as somebody's like oh you're just you're cranky you did blah blah and then everybody starts jumping in on that and i just need to stop that and also not spreading activism by cleaning screw that shit i shouldn't have to clean up after a bunch of adults or even young adults i shouldn't have to do that um, i got six busted discs on my back from serving this country i do don't bend over very well and so no i'm not cleaning up I, and i shouldn't have to clean up other people's messes and major props to those that do i've seen some youtubers that, that camp full-time they've been out on some of the uh, bureau land management lands and they've they've cleaned up and kudos to you you know i wasn't prepared i didn't have like a trash bag in reach or so it's my channel i run it how i want to all right this is uh from my russian video again from uh the mall now this is kind of funny this is my best performing video like 700,000 views or so uh, we landed in Moscow we were kind of tired we we're jet lagged from a long flight we got to our hotel we laid down we got up we're like oh crap man we're hungry and it's it's late it's like eight nine o'clock at night there's a mall across the street so we figured it was a food court we took a chance walked in there got something to eat as everything was closing there happens to be like a uh, like a Home Depot type of store in there. There's also a big supermarket, which I found uh, amazing that there's a supermarket inside of a mall. You know, something we don't see. So I pulled out the camera and videotaped what I could that night that we were there. And it was pretty much this huge alcohol section. It went on for about five rows. Um, it was freaking massive. So I videotaped that. And then we went back another day. Uh, before we left Moscow and I videotaped the rest of the stuff and you can tell the one day I'm wearing like a dark blue jacket I think it was one of the other days I'm wearing a very light blue L to the W sweater so somebody made a comment about and here again another one of the white knights for the country of Russia because they they think that I'm trying to say that they're all alcoholics I never said that I just showed how much alcohol it's a very big selection if you drink that's freaking awesome I mean it, I also showed they had a huge selection of tea and coffee and stuff like that, you know, the Russian coffee. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, they comment, oh, notice there's nobody in the alcohol section. You know, it's like how many times I've heard that comment, 
Like, stop being a white knight for the country. Nobody said that you're all a bunch of drunks and all that shit. I'm married to a Russian. Why would I bash the people or the country? So, I... This is one of those, like, reoccurring comments, but I just got another one recently. Trying to be the hero for Russia. Oh, we don't drink. It's okay if you do. Nobody's holding it against you. But, you know, it's like, I told him, like, you're so keen to notice that, but you didn't notice I went from a bright blue sweater to a black jacket. Alright, uh, in U.S., everyone in an apartment is a renter. Uh, yeah, that's our term apartment. That means you rent. I don't know what your problem is. And you said something about uh, people in Europe, you bash people. And nobody bashed anybody in Europe. I don't know what you're coming from, but... <laughs> This is the Jenny Springs video again. Boy, this one's hot. You're best suited for uh, state parks with generator running RVs. If you guys have ever watched any of my videos where I stayed at a state park, have you ever seen me run the generator? We're always plugged in the power. State parks don't allow generators. And some that do, there's only a few hours. Like, Last year when we went to see the Fall Colors of New York, we drove through a state park and we stopped somewhere and uh, we were walking around a loop where people were camping because you know, we were interested in the whole camping loop. We'd never been to a place where RVs in that park so we were kind of walking. Plus there was like a trail that kind of cut through there. And uh, when I was walking by, one of the rangers stopped this guy and he says, hey, you can only run your generator from like 8 to 10 and 2 and 4 or something like that. So. I already knew there was limited hours. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do solar and all that other happy stuff. So, uh, if I ever came in that situation, but yeah, generally state parks, you're not running a generator. If you do, it's a very limited uh, time frame that you can. Alright, this is another one from Jenny Springs. It says, I complain too much. Showed women in bathing suits and you're a pervert and cranky. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? First off, I, everything I did was in public. People wore bathing suits because it's a spring. I filmed people in bathing suits. I filmed people in air tubes. I filmed people in side-by-sides. I filmed all kinds of people. I did add like a special section like, hey, there's some really nice scenery. Yeah, there's some attractive women walking around. Uh, it's not like I stuck a GoPro in a shower and videotaped them. And it's not like they didn't see me walking around like this. So nothing I did wasn't like unknown it was in public I mean it's a key thing you're in public so if you're willing to be seen in public in a bikini whatever you know and cranky oh well don't watch the video but you know what my thumbnail for that video is a picture of spring with two girls in a bikini so same time dude you clicked on it you clicked on because you saw the girls in the bikinis sex sells on YouTube, hate to say it, but that's just the way it is, uh, you know, a lot of people take advantage of it, whether it be husband and wife couples or some, uh, female YouTubers, I mean, I know, uh, a lot of people watch other car channels, you see some of these, uh, women out there taking a picture with some shock absorbers or some shit with some freaking Daisy Dukes and their legs out in a tank top. Because they know they, they, they ain't nobody give a shit about them watch installing a pair of shocks or doing whatever. You want to see freaking titties bouncing. So that's all it is, man. And you can watch in the videos. Like if you watch, like I, I got recommended an airplane video because I watched some stuff. The guy's got his wife in the chair. She's got her seatbelt under her boobs in a side shot like that. And they're like, oh, this happened. Like, come on, man. You gotta exploit your wife like that. I mean, I could put my wife's boobs in half the things. video out here with freaking uh, women that are exposing their freaking tits for uh, a thumbnail to get views. Can't sleep. Don't go to Ginny. Everyone knows that. I go there because I like to drive my side by side. Well, first of all, obviously everybody doesn't know that. The reviews are kind of mixed. I think some people that own the park or do whatever. Some people say it's great. We, yeah, we didn't read any reviews before we went because it was supposedly word of mouth from somebody that went that my wife worked with and then we 
found out that it was her sister recommended it to her. She recommended it. And I find out her sister is like 20 and probably enjoyed the party scene. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, but I mean, that's just kind of dumb that, hey, I know that there's rules. When you get there, they give you a piece of paper. It's a set of rules. And it specifically says no off road vehicles, no golf carts, no any of that stuff. But you go there because you enjoy your side by side. Well, congratulations to you. Stop being freaking lazy. The park's not that big. Me and the wife walked all over, and I got a bad back, and it still managed to walk. You don't need a side by side. You're just showing off. Hey, look at this goofy off road thing. Or I say goofy. Look at this off road thing I have, and I took it all the way camping because you're too lazy to walk. You know, it's, it's just showing off. I think some camping is even like that. I think people get the biggest, baddest RVs or whatever like that because they just want to show everybody, like, hey, I got this monster fifth wheel and this big pickup or something. So. Oh, that's not where I want to go. Good thing big cams and fuel injection don't mix. <laughs> All right, but uh, hey, so not to be like totally negative, man. I do get a ton of great comments. One one video I have, uh, I did a blower motor in my HHR. Those cars are known to have a water leak come from the cowl area because that's a piece of plastic they put in there would shift out of place and let water in. So inevitably your resistor would go, then the blower motor. And so I showed how to fix the water leak, the blower motor, and I've had so many tremendously great comments on that video so many people thanking me for saving them so much money people that really have had no experience working on cars watched the video and they felt confident in doing the job themselves and they let me know hey i followed your video i got it fixed thank you so much uh, mechanic wanted three hundred dollars the dealer wanted five hundred dollars uh, i got it fixed for like the 50 bucks it cost me for the blower motor and man, that's freaking great. That's why I do this stuff, man. You know, if I do something bad, you know, I deserve I deserve a, a bad comment or something like that. But, I mean, man, when I do a video and I help somebody out like that, it's really rewarding. And that, that really helps, man. I, I love stuff like that. So, um, I mean, yeah, so I, a lot of really, really great positive comments. I also met a lot of great people like Gerard I talked about earlier. He made a comment to me about the car I was talking about. I think I mentioned one video, like I didn't think the intake was gonna fit. He sent me a link to uh, a, the, the rubber fittings, the compliance fittings that I have on the intake now. To fit. He's like, hey, this is what I did to fit on my intake. Because the first TPI, the throttle body, is massive. It's almost twice the size of a factory uh, tune port. So, you know, he's like, hey, get this part. And I did, and you know, sometimes the comments work out great. Sometimes not so much. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you got to take the good with the bad. I'm not, you know, against the comments. It's just, uh, I figured it's an interesting section, uh, a side of YouTube that you don't see too much of from the other side. About stuff you kind of have to hear. section um, I do have a new drone uh, the wife's already seen it she's kind of pissed to put it mildly but I'm going to go through I'm going to show you that later and explain kind of why I went this route we do have a camping trip coming up and I really want to have a nice drone that I can go out and get some nice shots so uh, I'm going to do a little drone talk on the next thing I'm still waiting to hear back from my tuner about the last data log I did with Project Z28 still trying to work in the idle a little bit and figure out some kind of sweet spot with it but hopefully we're going to tune the higher end i don't know uh maybe we'll do a, a torque converter or a transmission in this thing i really don't know this money's tight and i'm really afraid of blowing this transmission if i put a torque converter in here blow the transmission then i'm screwed so i'm really really hesitant so let me know what you think of this segment um I should do more if you like it or not let me know in the comments down below please subscribe if you haven't leave a thumbs up links down below for discounts for merchandise and uh you want to know what kind of equipment i'm running on the channel all good things like that so until then stay safe and take care i'm gonna go fly my drone this is my road i 
found a nice little high school that's got like a big running track and all that. So should be able to actually have some fun. They got some pre-programmed flight modes that I've never played around with too much. So we'll have a little fun with that. So stay safe, subscribe, like, share, comment, and we shall 